I'm Dr. Darcy Failings, a developmental pediatrician at Holland Bloorview Kids Rehabilitation Hospital, and I'm here to provide an overview of a paper that's appearing in the journal this coming May. It's looking at the neurodevelopmental profiles of children with hemiplegic cerebral palsy with a focus on middle cerebral artery infarcts and periventricular venous infarcts. I thought I'd start with a case study. So John is nine months of age and has a right hand preference. An MRI that you've ordered shows a left periventricular venous infarction. You diagnose unilateral or left hemiplegic cerebral palsy. And the parents ask you what you know about the development of other children who have this injury pattern. CPNAT is a translational neuroscience network focused on cerebral palsy. And this particular study involved eight children's treatment centers based in Ontario, Canada. We recruited children with hemiplegic cerebral palsy, and we were able to recruit 330 children into this study, and 240 had clinically ordered neuroimaging, and that represented the cohort for this study. We created a large clinical database and we collected information across five different plat pattern platforms. But this particular study focused on combining the neuroimaging platform and the neurodevelopmental platform. We looked at the developmental profiles of children with MCA infarcts and compared them to children with paraventricular venous infarctions. So one of the interesting results was just a categorization of the different neuroimaging patterns in unilateral or hemiplegic cerebral palsy. We weren't surprised to see the large proportion of blue, the MCA infarcts, which came close to 40%. Ahead of time, we anticipated it might be even higher, but we were a little bit surprised to see the large proportion in green representing periventricular injuries. And within that, we had a large proportion that had periventricular venous infarctions, 17% of the total cohort. The other thing that was quite interesting about this subgroup of children with the periventricular venous infarctions is that they were predominantly born at term, over 80%. This slide presents the fine motor findings Again, the green is representing the paraventricular venous infarctions. The blue is the middle cerebral artery infarctions. And we saw more preserved hand function and hand usage in children with paraventricular venous infarctions. We looked at sensory function across light touch, two point discrimination, cold sensation, and proprioception. And in this slide, the lighter gray represents the paraventricular venous infarction group. The black represents the MCA group. And again, we found more preserved sensory function in the PVI group. We also found less seizures and less intellectual disability. So what does this paper add to the literature? We have a good description of the developmental profiles of children with unilateral cerebral palsy according to these two common infarction types. We found that children with middle cerebral artery infarctions had more impact on their neurodevelopmental profile than those with periventricular venous infarctions. We found it interesting to see the high proportion of periventricular injuries in children with unilateral cerebral palsy and also found it interesting that the predominant uh, group in PVI were born at term. Thank you very much.